Hello everyone and welcome to another casual review. Today I'm talking about Cat Quest. Cat Quest is another one of those freebie games that I got from my Amazon subscription. It is a very basic action RPG that is pretty digestible. And when I say digestible, it's easy to understand and play. So you play as the hero, a cat knight who turns out to be of dragon blood, a type of cat that's an ancient dragon slayer. You are also accompanied by a little cat spirit named Spiri. At the beginning of the game, your character's sister is stolen by an evil cat overlord and it's your job to rescue your sister. You're going to go on lots of different cat quests during this game. Uh, you are going to help out villagers that you come across. You're going to slay enemies. How you encounter these quests are these bulletin boards, these billboards that are located in various towns. You go and interact with them and then you talk with the person who put the quest on the board and then usually these, when I say digestible, I mean it. Like these quests are pretty simple it's like hey go to this cave take out all the enemies in the cave or hey go into the forest defeat these enemies or survive this ambush and then you will gain your rewards oftentimes these quests have multiple chain quests to them where it's like a little overarching mini story but what's weird about this is you have to constantly go back to that first bulletin board billboard that had that first initial quest. So you'll you'll take care of the first task and it'll say, okay, return back to me later. And then you have to walk back to that bulletin board and get the next level quest. I think they intended this to be where you are constantly bouncing between all these different towns because oftentimes the recommended level for these quest chains will increase exponentially. And so it's supposed to be like, you do a little bit of this quest over here, then a little bit of this quest over here, and you're supposed to like, bounce between them. Now, just because something is a recommended quest level doesn't mean that you are not able to uh, accept it and actually try to do it. This game actually lets you have a lot of free roam even at the beginning of the game. Of course, you are going to be surrounded by a ton of enemies that could potentially defeat you in one hit, but you could go there if you wanted to. That's one of my gripes is I wish that the enemies themselves had some kind of level marker above their head so I could tell before I initiated combat if this is a particular encounter that I was willing to do or not. Nevertheless, when you do defeat an enemy or complete a quest, you will gain experience points. If you defeat an enemy, these drops in little blue orbs. You collect these experience points, you level up, and leveling up increases your health, your attack, and your magic. Those are your three main stats. Uh, they try to keep things very simple here. You can acquire gear in order to either increase or decrease those certain stats. So if you just wanted to focus entirely on magic, you may want to grab like a wizard hat and a wand. This will increase your magic exponentially but reduce the amount of attack damage that you do and you are it's probably in your best interest to do both of these because uh, magic relies on you hitting enemies physically in order to recharge your mana so then you can cast more spells and then if you're just focusing on like a melee type of person it you'd be wasting potential damage if you weren't using any kind of spells and so while initially I tried to go for more of like a mage kind of build I realized I was losing out on a a lot of damage by decreasing my attack damage that much and so I kind of just ended up doing both. Combat is laid out pretty simply basically the enemies have a area around them and this is like the area that they're going to do a damage either when they swing their sword or cast a certain kind of spell there will be like a radius around them and you just basically need to avoid being in that damage zone when the enemy does their attack. This is where the spell frost really came in handy for me where it slowed down the enemy's attack animations so once I slowed them down with that my ice spell then I could really wail on them before they had any chance to retaliate. And I really do like how they handled the spells here. Basically, like, uh, as you acquire gold, you can go to these mage towers and you can purchase new spells or upgrade your already existing spells. Gear works kind of similarly, where you'll gain gear for quests or maybe you'll find them in chests and every time you gain this get the same type of gear instead of just having two types of the same gear it upgrades the current gear that you have so let's just say I have like a a fire sword if I get the second fire sword then my rather than having two fire swords it'll be upgraded 
which is pretty fun. I do wish that there was a way for me to more target specific equipment that I did want to upgrade rather than it just being completely random and just hoping that my favorite weapon or gear did get upgraded. And I never did figure out how to unlock locked chests. Whenever you like explore dungeons, uh, there's usually going to be a chest that has like a red key on it. And your your little cat ghost spear will say, you need uh, a key to unlock this chest. And I'm like, cool, I have no idea where to get that. And I assumed later on it would explain that to me. Maybe I'd get a spell to unlock locked chests. However, I never encountered the solution on how to do that. So I guess I just left a lot of potential gear on the table there. Leveling up is fairly quick and fun and snappy. It always feels like I make significant progress in this game even if I only sat down to play for 10 or 15 minutes because it's it's a small action RPG. It's bite size. You can potentially like walk around the whole island that you are playing on in just a couple of minutes because it, it's it's digestible is the word I keep using. As you play through the game, you will encounter just a, a couple of abilities to navigate to the areas that you aren't able to access, the ability to cross water and, and fly over obstacles. And as you are exploring this, this world, this little island here, there are these, I don't know, I guess I, I kind of want to call them obelisks. There's these little obelisks scattered throughout the, the world and they give you little passages on the, the lore of this world. And there's actually actually like this whole uh, lore about the cats and the dragons. There's this whole dragon war, but apparently it goes deeper than that because they kind of reference like, oh, you know, back in the day, cats were feral and they didn't know how to speak English. And so there's this whole deeper thing going on rather than just this surface level cutesy cat quest game. Whenever you do accept a quest, there's just like an arrow telling you pretty much exactly where to go or a trail that you're supposed to follow, but it's fairly uh, open and easy to understand where you're supposed to go, what you're supposed to do, which uh, it, it means that most of the side quests were pretty similar, but at the same time, they were never too much of a commitment. I would complain about the lack of like a quest log here but really once you get a quest it'll take like two minutes to do anyway so uh, you probably are just going to do one at a time anyway and if you ever do want to get like more of a bird's eye view of the land you are always welcome to like zoom out and make a game plan uh, I do wish that there would be a easier way to notify you that a certain bulletin board has a quest for you because each town has their own bulletin board and if you can't see the particular town that has a potential quest for you you kind of just have to like wander around until you do see a bulletin board that uh, will have some kind of notification on it because some, you know it is in your best interest to do all these side quests or at least most of them to level up in order to encounter some of the the main quest uh, obstacles that you may encounter, most of them being high level dragons. As you can imagine, with a cat theme game, there's a ton of cat puns for you. For instance, you will, the first big city that you will encounter is the Cat Pitol. Speary often calls you a Potna, just little puns like that. The word Nian also usually gets tied to, to cats. I noticed this first when I played Monster Hunter. I'm not sure, like, do, I don't have a cat. Do cats often make the noise Nian? But it's, it's very cutesy in that way. Overall, I actually had a ton of fun with this game, despite it only being about five or six hours it it always just felt like a fun gamey game something that I never got frustrated with really it's something that's easy but not entirely mindless like there's no iframes here and for those of you who don't know iframes stand for invincibility frames typically in a video game when you get attacked by an enemy you have just a couple seconds of invincibility that's not the case here and so if like you get hoarded by a ton of enemies and you're not being smart it's very easy to lose all of your health all at once assuming all of their attacks attacks happen at once. And so you do still need to play strategically. You do need to attack and roll out of enemy attacks. You need to be smart, but it's nothing like too overtly difficult. I actually think I'm going to give this game a four out of five. And I do have Cat Quest 2, so that will be something that I will look forward to sometime in the future. I think that one introduces dogs. Well guys, that's it for me. Let me know if you have any questions or comments about Cat Quest, and I'd love to hear what you have to say. Otherwise, I'll talk to you later. Bye!